Do we have any uh, music? What kind of music would you like? A little gangster rap. Alright. This is a 72 year old male who presented to the ER after a ground level fall. Orthopedics was consulted for a left hip fracture. This type of hip fracture is called a enterotrochanteric hip fracture. And the procedure that I offered him is a left hip cephalomedullary nail. I usually start off the procedure by getting some x-rays of the patient's hip fracture. And then we make adjustments to realign the bones. This is a HANA table that we use to provide some traction as well as rotation of the hip fracture so that we can realign the bone prior to even starting the surgery. Their feet are placed in these ski boots and then we can pull, we can adjust the legs all while the patient's on the table. Most of these are osteoporotic hip fractures, meaning that the patient has very soft bones and they fall even just from standing and break their hip. I'm going to scrub in now and this is my time to usually reflect. I re rehearse the steps of the surgery in my head and just take a mental break before starting the surgery. Do we have any uh, music? What kind of music would you like? A little gangster rap. All right, we're gonna go, go get gowned and gloved up here. I use this uh, drape here, this is called a shower curtain. It's quick and uh, really simple to uh, use. It uh, helps with um, just draping out the whole entire area in a really efficient manner. I'm gonna verify reduction of the fracture first, so I bring x-ray in just to uh, reconfirm that we have a good reduction. We were actually pulling on the patient's leg and also providing some internal rotation due to the deforming forces from this fracture here. All right, so this is a pin that we place into the bone. This is usually how I start. And then what I'm going to do is make an incision over uh, this pin, right over the skin, and then we're gonna drill the path for the nail. Most of these hip fractures are treated with intermedullary nails. These are nails that go on the inside of the bone to stabilize a fracture until it heals. So I'm checking the x-ray and making sure that this pin is in a good position. We're gonna make the incision here. And then this is a reamer or a drill or a starting reamer. And this will essentially create a hole in the bone. And then the nail would go over this hole on the inside of the bone um, to stabilize the fracture. I'm using a short nail in this case. There are longer nails that, that span the entire length of the femur. If a patient has a more distal femur fracture like a mid shaft or if a, a subtrochanteric femur fracture that is a little bit more distal than this patient, so I'll use a long nail. But this nail here, we're checking to make sure it's in a good alignment and it, that it's working so that when we put our pins in, that we know that everything will be um, aligned. So this titanium rod goes on the inside of the bone to stabilize the fracture. We generally do these fractures with a goal of less than 24 hours. So if a patient falls and breaks their hip, within 24 hours is within the standard of care. We do these surgeries within 24 hours, typically to get the patients up and start weight bearing, which means walking. The longer that the patient lays in bed, the longer that they delay surgery or surgery is delayed, the more likely the patient has a risk for post-operative complications. With these hip fractures, their mortality rate goes up. So the goal is to get them to the operating room within 24 hours. If surgery is delayed, patients have increased risk of bed sores, DVTs, post-operative complications. So I try to get to them within 24 hours of getting called from the ER. This is a little device that uh, stabilizes this area while we're drilling. This is a pin. I need to make sure that this pin is in a good position within the femoral head and we'll check a AP view, which is, which is a anterior posterior view, as well as a lateral view to make sure that it's in a good position. 
All right, we're gonna make a uh, drill. This is basically to create a path across that femoral neck to um, uh, create this path and then we'll place a screw. That screw will go through the skin here and then through the bone and then inside of the nail to stabilize it. This is a lag screw. It goes across the femoral neck to provide some anti-rotation um, forces uh, for the proximal part of the femur. So we're gonna remove this pin and remove this apparatus and then we're gonna place one more additional screw. This is a distal locking screw. This is just to lock the screw and hold it in place inside the bone. I have to make a separate incision here. We're gonna drill to create a path for that screw. This is what this is, this is a drill bit. And then we're gonna place the screw inside of the bone that goes across the nail. This is a distal locking screw. So these hip fractures are usually in patients who have osteoporosis. Usually these patients just walk and then they fall and they break their hip. We try to get to them and into the operating room within 24 hours. Most of these surgeries here literally take 15 to 20 minutes to do. And the good thing is that patients can get up and start walking right away, right after surgery with physical therapy. So this surgery is done for hip fractures. We do this in the operating room while the patient's asleep. They're under anesthesia, so they don't feel or remember anything. And the surgeries are very successful. All right, we're gonna remove everything and deattach it from the rod. So the rod now is on the inside of the bone. This patient has a screw across the femoral neck as well as a distal locking screw uh, to hold it in place distally. So this is how we fix intratrochanteric hip fractures. This is a fracture that is commonly seen in patients with osteoporosis. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.